Hello, this is my box of miscellaneous samples. Actually, I actually have a couple of boxes of miscellaneous samples. This is the one where all the stuff goes that I can't even imagine ever finding something to um, get, a, get a matching theme from uh, for. Uh, so this is just the, true, the truly random stuff. And recently it has been kind of overgrowing a little bit. So what we're gonna do today is just pull Two battles out of here, um, basically as random as I can, and we're going to review them because you know why not? No notes, no nothing, just review them, see how they are. Um, last time we did this, I had my wife pull these and, and pour them blind for me. Today I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, be, and it's not gonna be blind. I'll be able to see the label, see what they are, but um, uh, I'm gonna be picking these randomly. So I have mixed these up a little bit, and I'm just gonna pick, uh, move around. Some of these are, have different heights. I know there's like a, <laughs> a Johnny Walker Red Label sample in here that is slightly higher than the others. So I'm just gonna pick, um, uh, maybe this one at the bottom here. I don't know what that is. And, um, uh, hell. Let's say this one in the corner. All right, what do I got? What have I got? Um, I've got, oh, look at that. Bell Mead, uh, Bourbon. This is their Sherry Finish, um, 115 proof, 15.3 proof. Um, okay, so Sherry Finish Bourbon. Sherry Finished MGP, as I recall. Uh, and the next contestant. <laughs> oh, God. Of course, this is, <laughs> of course it was going to be this. Jack Daniels, single barrel. Uh, proof for, uh, this is a barrel pick for Frugal and MBS, 67.6% APV. So we have got a bourbon battle on our hands. Um, so what I'm going to do, after putting my mess of samples on the floor, is I'm going to pour these um, and give them a little bit of air first. So I'm going to pour these and pause, uh, and then we'll come back. For tasting because because it would not be fair to um, you know taste these completely unaired out they're gonna be tight coming out of our, our little sample bottles here so that's the bell bead poured and on the Jack Daniels I've seen some of these over 70 70% alcohol so I'm glad that this one is not maybe not quite that strong but uh, I'm sure it'll be a, be a fun ride oh my god okay so uh, I'm, I'm going to leave these here, pause for just a second, and <laughs> we'll get this thing going. All right, hitting the pause button now. And we're back. Um, so it's been, what, six or seven minutes since I uh, first poured these. I did, did put a cap on them, Ralphie style, to kind of concentrate the nose a little bit. Um, all right, let's uh, let's get into these. Okay, so this is a Bell Mead Sherry Finish. Um, not sure any more information about these. I remember the the, the standard ones of these being a little bit lower proof. This one is one hundred fifteen point three, so uh, fifty. You know, pushing fifty eight, almost fifty eight, um, alcohol by volume. By volume. Uh, Bell Mead, unless they've changed their recipe, is a blend of MGP stuff, mostly the high rye recipe with a little bit of other stuff blended in. Um, but uh, you know what? Let's let's just get stuck into this. See how it is. On the nose. Okay. Um, lots of uh, well, cherry, like stewed cherry, um, and black pepper. So take some cherries. Stew them up and just just start grinding black pepper on on them all day long, and you're kind of getting getting uh, the sense of this. But then there's a, like a, a serious graininess behind all that, so you're really taking some um, uh, you're taking some you're you're taking your cherries and you're sort of smothering them in in a, some cream of wheat and some oatmeal at the same time, maybe some uh, muesli mixed in there. Um, 
black bread, um, sort of Eastern European Baltic style black, black bread coming through. I'm actually surprised at how little the um, the sherry cask is, is kicking in. There's, I mean, there's a little bit of dried fruit going on, um, but it's really just molding in, kind of kind of melding into that um, that sh that cherry note. Okay, a little bit of mint coming through of all things. Some kind of uh, uh, I don't know, Colgate, Colgate toothpaste. Happening, a little grassiness. A little um, uh, rosemary, fresh, fresh basil, actually. Uh, eucalyptus, actually, quite a lot of herbaceousness going on. And I mean, the the, sh the sh this would be an interesting one to, to to try blind, actually, because I would have never called cherry cask. I'm just not getting the sort of raw dried fruit notes I would have expected. Yeah, it's very grainy, very, um, lots of woody, fruity kind of things going on. Kirsch in there. A little bit of, um, malted milk ball going on. So hints of milk chocolate. It's really only, if, if I was looking for sherry cast, the only thing it would really give it this way is the black pepper element. And so far, we'll come back to this with water, but so far that's about all I'm getting. Um, it's a nice nose. It's a very classic um, high rye bourbony nose, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, on the palate. Nice. Again, very bourbony. Um, uh, I don't know what I was expecting. I was it, well. Okay, I, I can tell you, I was expecting a lot of dried fruit, um, some nutty, uh, you know, some green nuttiness, and a lot of black pepper. And the, again, the only thing I'm really getting is just loads and loads and loads and loads of freshly ground black pepper. That's kind of what's telling me uh, that this is a sherry cask. But it's really the only thing there. Um, so again, intense graininess. We're we're sort of, um, it's, you know, like um, uh, cream of wheat eau de vie. A um, little sawdust in there. A little um, uh, kirsch, again, combined with, like, you know, cherry sauce, cherry, stewed cherries. Hint of green strawberry in there. Um, and that, those little minty details, which make this fun, um, uh, the, again, the, 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 the fresh basil, actually a little bit of fresh peppermint in there too. Um, just a little bit of, uh, a little bit of stewed tea, like stewed, um, English breakfast tea, that kind of thing. Yeah, this is great. Well, no, it's not great. I mean, it's 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 good. It's nice. The only thing that's throwing me off is is I was expecting more sherry, from the fact that they were so that it's so sort of prominently pushing the the sherry finish thing. What it really just tastes like is a good example of sort of MGP um, with a little bit of age on it. So, but we're gonna give this a little bit of water and come back to it. See how it opens up. Four. Four squirts might be enough. I'm guessing we'll need five. Well, let's do four and a half. Okay, and moving on to the Jack Daniels single barrel for Frugal and MBS, bottled at 67.6% ABV. Um, I did think this was very funny that I pulled this out. <laughs> um, that I just popped this out of the box. Um, I've not had Jack Daniels in a very long time. Uh, I had a, a gentleman Jack in the single barrel years ago that really just 
were not good enough for the money they were charging. So I, I haven't touched the brand really since. Um, but you got to remember, Jack is owned by the same folks who own Forrester, and Forrester's been getting pretty exciting recently. So it's uh, no huge surprise they've tried to transfer some of that fun to uh, the Jack Daniels side of things. So this is a um, very, very high proof um, single barrel from the Jack folks. Ooh. And it is a fun on the nose. Okay, so the, the alcohol nip is very extreme on this. Um, once you get past that, though, it's very charming. Again, lots of um, Baltic-style black rye bread. So sourdough rye that is so thick you'd have to cut it with a lightsaber, that kind of thing. That, right off the bat, um, just, I, I feel like I'm smelling, uh, it, so it's, it's cherries, but it's also like, like black cherries, if you've ever had black cherries. Um, tons of, I, I hate to use the term brown sugar because it's so, uh, but like, Brown sugar stacked on top of brown sugar and compounded into like a brown sugary diamond is what I'm smelling on this. Um, vanilla bean, obviously. Some uh, touch of maple syrup. Not as herbaceous as the uh, the bell mead by any means, but it's the the fruitiness and the the concentrated sugary. Um, almost golden molasses, cooking molasses, light molasses kind of note. It's really charming me on this. It, it just smells dense, which I like. Um, also a little bit of campfire smoke in there, a little bit of um, uh, nuttiness, like uh, um, walnut shells, kind of toasted walnut shells. Going along with your cherry and your black cherry and your brown sugary del deliciousness. And maybe like some um, some kind of cakey thing, like a like an old fashioned cake, like a oh like a sponge cake, maybe. Okay, on the palate. Here we go. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. It's also fun to, I mean, this is, it's making me laugh. Um, so let me, let me, let me, uh, uh, dissect this a little bit. Very nippy. Lots of alcohol in this thing. It's, it's pushing 70% and you, you, it is not hiding it. You're combining that with a ton of, of American oak influence, so the, you know char, charred American oak influence. Um, so it's like alcohol with vanilla and like uh, pepper. Not as much as on the Bell Mead, but definitely a kind of white pepper note. Um, uh, burned marshmallows, and then uh, just piles and piles and piles of Kirsch and cherry black cherry some 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 raspberry in there oh that's delightful it doesn't have the layers of something like a like a george c stag or a um um you know a pappy's uh but this is doing some some really classic american whiskey things um there's a little bit of a grassiness element to this. Um, nuts, again, lots of toasted nuts, different different nuts. So walnuts, again, but also maybe some uh, walnut shells along with the, the actual walnut uh, meat, I guess you would call it. Um, that's fun. Um, hardwood smoke. Different hardwood smoke, some little hickory in there, little little maple wood, apple wood. Um, 
yeah, I'm in. I'm actually shocked at how good this is. Um, I've never been a huge Jack Daniels fan by any means, but what is happening in this glass is, is kind of kind of impressing me. It's not subtle. This is not subtle. Um, this is not something to kind of do any dink, deep thinking about. Um, as you kind of unwrap it over the course of a night, this is a this is a, a battle axe of a whiskey, but. Um, <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. Okay. Let's give it some water, see how it behaves. I do I do think this is actually quite a quite old. Um no idea how old, but I would think seven, eight years old minimum. I prob possibly older than that. Um Whatever it is, it's it's a very good whiskey. Four five. It's gonna need six. I just know it. Yeah, let's do six. All right. Yeah, at this point in the tasting, the uh, the Jack Daniels is kind of, um, it's kind of showing uh, the running circles around the bell meat a little bit. And I like the bell meat. This is good. This is nice. But man, the Jack Daniels, man. All right, let's go back to the bell mead, see what it's got going on. Interesting. So with water, the Velmeen kind of brings out uh, a kind of strawberry syrup element. Um, and some of those, those cooling herbaceous elements that I was getting before. So now we're getting really peppermint. Um, pepper, peppermint leaves, not the, not the sort of flake, fake flavoring. Strawberry syrup was still getting cream of wheat, oatmeal. Um, Black rye. It's actually gotten quite a bit quieter with water. And don't tell me that I've overwatered this because I haven't. Okay, there's a little bit of a pleasant um, cough drops, like cherry cough drops kind of thing going on here. And I'm, even the, now the, the peppery element, it was kind of the, the main sign of sherry cask influence is, is kind of receded as well. Okay, on the palate. Okay, so the black pepper is there. Um, over stewed black tea. And a kind of like, yeah, like strawberry eau de vie combined with the kind of cherry eau de vie, the Kirsch thing I was getting before. Um, it's actually become quite delicate. Um, yeah. Cherry syrup, um, cream of wheat, oatmeal, mint leaves, basil. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same stuff as before, but we're moving forward those cooling elements and like just the strawberry thing, which has come out of nowhere, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah, good bourbon. Um, again, the, the, the lack of overt cherry influence is kind of surprising me, but this is very good indeed. I would, score-wise, no lower than an 85. Would I give that give it any higher? Mm. I mean, it's good, but it's not sort of, you know, completely wowing me. I would give this an 85 plus because it does bring out that extra element um, with water. And this label does not want to be written on it, so I'm just going to write it right here. 85 plus for BM. Nice, good whiskey. 
don't know what the price point is. Um, I mean, if it's if, if this is over under a hundred bucks, it's probably worth looking at, um, especially if you're a fan of, you know, MGP style style bourbons. Um, you know, the the smoke the, the smoke wagons and that kind of thing. Um, if it's over a hundred bucks, I would I would I would skip it. I think, you know, that's it's it's not special enough for that kind of price price point. Um, anyhow, back to the Jack Daniel single barrel. Uh, Barrel proof. Barrel pick. Barrel 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 barrel. Uh, on the nose now with water. It smells much the same except the alcohol nip is gone. We're now bringing forward some of those um, the hardwood smoke elements I was getting on the on the palate, particularly some apple smoke, applewood smoke. I'm sorry. Cherry wood, um, hints of hickory, but not very much. And along with that, the delicious cherry and kirsch and white pepper, vanilla, all that stuff I was getting before. Yeah, it's, I have to say, the bell meat is kind of suffering sitting, sitting next to this thing because this, it's so loud. I mean, it's like, you know, this is this is playing you know like like a nice pop country concert. This is playing like heavy metal, loud heavy metal, like um, like some some black metal being thrown at you right now. Um, it is quite sort of grassy floral. Maybe that's the uh, the the old forester element kind of creeping in, right on the palate. had another squirt of water this um <laughs> okay it's fun this is not something i could drink every night this is not uh, a subtle a subtle whiskey it is not um gonna lull you to sleep at all this is very loud this is very aggressive in your face stuff um but there is a, 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 a the level of quality on this is actually pretty high And it's balanced. I mean, especially once you get the, the water right. There's a balance to this. Arrives on delicious cherry fruitiness, the hardwood smoke, um, the white pepper. And it closes on black pepper, over stewed tea, very dry, very fun. Um, the finish just lasts forever, by the way. It covers my entire mouth in, you know, peppery, like, Corn candy, vanilla y goodness. This is terrific. Um, <laughs> I am I am completely caught off guard by how good this is. Um, I am shocked and delighted by how hard. Uh, Jack Daniels is bringing it with this little single barrel uh, pick that they've they put out here. It's not a revolution. This is not if if you know your bourbon. This is not bringing flavors you don't already know um, and enjoy, but. This is a really great presentation of them. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. I would give this 88 minimum. Um, can, I, can I get higher than that? Yeah, it's the balance that's really impressing me. Once you get the water right, there's a lot of pepper. There's a lot of smoke. There's a lot of like wood sugar and, and and vanilla, but somehow the the elements, all the loud, crazy elements of this thing, manage to balance each other out. 
For that reason, I would give this 89 out of 100. Um, the highest score I have given an American whiskey in a long time. Um, and it's Jack Daniels of all things. Um, wow. Yeah, so uh, 85 plus for the Velmead. Good showing. Um, but 89 points for the Jack Daniels um, of all things. Wow, okay. So that happened. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was uh, a little bit educational and entertaining. And um, cheers.